So while the carpet is sitting in the Witch's Brew, AKA dye mixture overnight, I figure I should move on to the rear seat covers. So I went through my boxes, I dug these guys out. And if you guys are wondering, the rears are only available in a vinyl finish and not in leather. So not that it's a huge thing, but if you guys were like extremely OCD and wanted to be perfectionist, you'd really want the rears to be leather to match the front seats. At the same time, how many people do you guys have sitting in the back of your Fox and how many people do you really have paying that close of attention to see whether or not the fabric is vinyl or leather? And this came with an array of parts when I got the Calypso. So it was included in the deal. It still has the tweed back there. The tweed is gonna stay in the car and we'll get into what's happening with the Calypso a little bit later. So for now, the rear seat is out. It's pretty straightforward in terms of removal. Push in on the front, snap it out of the little clips on the floor pan. I have the rear portion of the seat removed. Typically there's some bolts down here that go through into the lower section, I guess, of your floorboard going in towards the trunk. They were removed. So you really just got to kind of pull up and get the clips along the backside out of the parcel shelf in the rear. So we'll get going here. I got a couple tools, got some needle nose pliers, some side cutters, a set of little pliers, nothing too fancy. The reality is you'd really want to have hog ring pliers. If you guys aren't familiar with what a hog ring is, well, I'll show you. It's these little guys right here. Now they almost look like, you know, a wrapped over industrial staple. And in fact, that's really all they are. I'm assuming they have that term hog ring because it's sort of like that ring that you would see in the cartoon pictures of the nose being pierced with such a ring. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove these guys all out of this seat and uh, we'll see how we're going to get the fabric cover on here, but it should be pretty straightforward. So let's get at it. Start in this back corner. Now it's important to try not to break these because I am actually going to reuse them. I'm sure you could go out to the uh, hog ring store and get some new ones if you really wanted to. If you wanted to get fancy, I'm sure you could get hog ring pliers on Amazon. There we go. So the side cutters actually work a little bit better. All right. Remove the old cover like this. So it wasn't so bad now, was it? See, there's still some hog rings left on here. I'll get those off. Get all these other guys. All right, so one thing that you guys are gonna notice about the way that the material or the fabric comes is that it's inside out. The reason for that is whenever you're doing seat covers, it's almost easier to flip it around. Like this, because you are gonna have to do some pulling and stretching in order to get it to fit because it's brand new material. Get that tucked in there. I'm gonna have 
to want it to get it in there. Flip it over. All right, so you can see we got some bunching right here. So we want to make sure that everything is pulled and stretched. Let's tuck it in. Sort of like when you're trying to put on those jeans that are a little too tight, you know? Wiggle it, jiggle it, bounce up and down. Do what you gotta do. our leather covered rear seat rear seat bottom so as you can see things are looking a little bit better in the corners here again just beat it up heat it up do whatever you got to do but this is going to look a lot better in the back of the cali white coupe now we just got to move on and do the backrest let's see what we got here so the backrest is actually a little bit different. It is filled with staples. And you can choose to uh, just pry them up like I'm doing here. A little screwdriver. Or you can maybe get some needle nose pliers like this. Just, just grab them. they're accessible clamp down pull straight up mind there are a couple hog rings hiding down here so I'll have to get down in there twist them out just like that just three per side See, it's already folded inside out. Has these pouches. Slide our rods in there, as it did not come with them. And the fun part here is going to be hog ringing those guys down. And um, we'll see you back here shortly. All right, guys, I just finished dinner and I'm clean. So I figured I'd do some clean work, which I guess upholstery work is clean work. So where we left off here, I slid the rods through uh, both sides of the fabric here. And now I need to get a couple hog rings on. Which, uh, yeah, this one's going to be a little bit more involved for sure. 
All right, there, you can see the open part of the ring is now facing up. So I'm just gonna have to get it around the rod, which is here. So I'm gonna slip that, this part here, right down in the center of that hog ring and clamp it on. Flip things over, check them out. See if we had two rods going straight through here that we hog ring down. So, you know, you'd fold them over, do these two first, then do these two, but I think it's okay. Heat gun, so make sure all our seams are popped out. Looks like they are. All right, guys, so back to the rear cover here. I invested in an upholstery staple gun and green wasn't an option. I wish I got the green. Blue's okay. It is what it is. This was literally 15, 16 bucks. You even get this fancy little staple puller tool thing here so you can get underneath the staples and pull them out, I guess, which you saw how easy the staples came out, so don't need to worry about that. We even got some uh, staples in the kit here. And we'll begin. Let's see here. I think I'd already done that earlier. Ooh. There you go. Have a little drink. All the pain will go away. All right, guys, I think that'll do it. One rear LMR Corbo vinyl covered seat. So I'll hit it with the heat gun, stretch it out a little bit, get it beat up, get it installed, be good to go. I'm gonna let that sit out in the sun tomorrow. The sun will work its magic, hopefully, get some of those wrinkles out. Maybe I'll just kind of sit in it and bounce around, work that vinyl in some. If it was leather, it'd probably be a little bit more pliable, a little easier to work with, but whatever. Ultimately, the covers fit. They're going to look the part, especially once we pull those front seats out of the Calypso here. And then you guys are really gonna see how this comes together. The only thing that I'm missing now is my die that is required to get the carpet proper black. And then once that's done, we get to install everything and see how it looks. What's up guys? Welcome back to carpet dyeing round three. So if you guys remembered in my last video, the carpet came out well, forest green in color. And if we were going for a mid seventies look and feel, then maybe this would be the color that we want, but ultimately it isn't. So I did a little bit of digging online and I found Rit powder again. And even better, I found their Proline formula, which this stuff it's a one pound bag and apparently it's supposed to be good for up to 16 pounds of fabric. So the carpet is probably somewhere around there in reality. It's probably actually less with all the insulation off of it. And it's already pretty dark. So one other thing that I'm doing, I'm actually using hot water. Um, I know I didn't last time and I said you didn't have to, but you know what? Now I'm a little bit skeptical. I know in the past I used normal cold water on a hot summer day and everything was fine but maybe things have changed so i actually have my hose plumbed up to the hot water tank here and um get this can filled so well not filled 
I'm gonna add the powder now, or the dye, I should say, and um, we'll get everything stirred up. We'll get it, you know, somewhere around halfway full, and then we're gonna do our same procedure as before, and hopefully our outcome is gonna be a nice black carpet. So here's our powder. All right, guys, so starting to do some submerging and we can already see how nice and black just by dunking that, that that's coming out. So I'm pretty confident we're gonna win this time. So some people commented and said, well, what about a kiddie pool? You'll avoid the creases and everything else. Well, I feel like a kiddie pool, you would have to actually use more water, which means you'd need more dye because you wouldn't get as concentrated as a solution. So that's why I actually recommend that you move this around a couple of times to avoid any crease marks or tie-dye effects. The other thing about a kiddie pool is it would be hard to submerge as well. You would have to put, you know, I guess bricks or something, a bunch of heavy objects all around or on top of the carpet to get it underneath and submerged properly. So I like the garbage pail and it's actually easier to tip over when you're done. The kiddie pool, I guess, well, maybe you would, um, deflate it or whatever you would do and what else are you gonna do with that kiddie pool after anyways like a trash can is still always a trash can and you don't need to go out and invest money in buying something just to dye your carpet because you already have this at home right i'm gonna get this dunked in here swooshed around everything else and hopefully the end result is gonna be a nice black carpet all right guys so time is here it's been a couple of days i've just been busy catching up on some other stuff you can probably tell by the length of my beard and that i need to shave in the worst way but behind me, down on the ground here, you can actually see the result of the carpet. And I got it all vacuumed up. It's looking nice and black. I'm really happy with the way that it turned out in the end with the RIT ProLine formula. So my recommendation to you guys would to actually use two bags or two pounds of that formula, just because the carpet did have a little bit, it was on its way to becoming black. It just wasn't 100% there. Now with that final dye attempt that I did, things came out the way that I liked it. So I would say two pounds of the dye and you know try for the hot water and everything else and you should end up with a pretty nice result. The carpet literally looks like new. So we're gonna go ahead now, get that put back into the car. I've actually already laid down the sound deadening back on top of all that kill mat that we found. So that's pretty much good to go. It's just reverse of the removal and the carpet will be in and you can see down here behind me on the ground we got the corbeau set up so here's the two fronts that were in the calypso car so for now the calypso has the lx gray cloth sitting in it and in the back is the seat that i recovered with the so-called vinyl corbeau rear seat recovering kit and when you look at it this way, the reality is it looks pretty good, right? You're not really going to know that these are leather and that that's vinyl in the back. In fact, those are already kind of dusty. I never even got to set them out in the sun. I'm sure a nice warm day with the windows up will help with some of those creases that you can see along the back of the seat there. But you know what? That's, that's part of the deal when, when you got freshly recovered stuff. So... Anyways, we'll get all of this reinstalled in the car. I'm really happy with, you know, the way that that rear seat turned out. I wasn't 100% happy with some other products that I had played with recently, if you guys saw my door panel video, but the covers, no complaints. I don't know if I'm gonna be getting all of the console and everything back in this video because I think I'm gonna re-dye it. You can just see, you know, like I'm gonna try and clean it up you know, maybe a, a really good scrubbing, but I think it's actually discolored. You can see just the color difference here. So I don't know if I should redo the whole center console frame and center in the uh, SEM Presidio gray. And, you know, even that ashtray door is uh, a significantly different color. Guys, just make sure when you do put your sound 
deadening back in that you got it the right way you know there's the front section then there's the rear section i'm not gluing this back down on the bottom side of the carpet i'm just going to put the carpet on top of this and call it a day there's really no need to glue it back on or anything like that the carpet the way that it's molded and it's shaped is going to keep everything in place All right guys, the carpet is in, rear seat is in, front seats are just kind of sitting in place here for now, but the rear seat looks pretty good in there. That wraps up this two-part series on the white Cali Coupe in terms of some interior upgrades. Like I said, I still need to decide if I'm gonna be doing the center console. Again, the SEM Presidio gray is the closest thing that you're gonna find to the smoke gray color that came in the 87 through 89 cars. So maybe I'll do that. I'll get the rest of all the trim installed, get the stereo back in there. I still need to do my LED bulb conversion in the climate controls in the gauge cluster and see if I do something with the door panels. But otherwise, really happy with the interior. The seats look and feel a million times better than those gray LX gangster leaning cloth ones did. So happy about that it's really bringing the rest of the car together so be sure to stay tuned i know gearhead released a video on this car saying that it'll be for sale everything's for sale for the right price the owner that i bought it off of actually reached out to me so you never know i do want to enjoy this car a little bit before i let it go because i haven't even had it other than a test drive i haven't enjoyed it in its daily automatic fashion which i do intend on doing so if you have extreme interest in the car, there's going to be a two in front of the price. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. And the longer that I keep it, more mods are going to happen. So maybe better value for money. Maybe, I don't know. Anyways, as always, thank you again for all of you who follow along this far. If you're interested in any infamous project, swag or gear, be sure to check that out at theinfamousproject.com. And also don't forget to check out the podcast that I have with Casual Customs, which is on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever the Apple platform is that they have. And you can actually see, or sorry, listen to them directly off my website, theinfamousproject.com as well. So until next time, we'll see you guys then.